Hello everyone and welcome to the third video in our library orientation series. In this video today we're going to look at searching for books and ebooks that the library provides. Um, first we'll take a quick look at the library's online catalog which lets you search primarily for books that the library has in print in the library. Uh, and then I'll show you a couple of online resources, um, some that the library subscribes to and some that are freely available online for finding more ebooks. So again, we're at the library website. Now we could click this link right on the left, library catalog and reserves, which will pull up our library catalog, which looks like this. But again, on that library page, if you scroll down and get to this search box that says catalog, you can also search directly right here for any terms or subject areas you're looking for books and eBooks related to. Uh, media here mostly refers to DVDs, some DVDs that the library has, um, which are located on the lower level. It's sometimes easier just to browse the DVD collection because it's not that large, but those are available just so you know. Um, so you could search here or you could click this link to pull up the catalog. In both cases, it brings you to this online catalog page. Um, and it's pretty straightforward, although as we'll see in some of the results, uh, the results aren't always sorted as well as you might find on uh, one of the databases like Credo, where you know when we typed in a term, it came up pretty much right at the top or it suggested terms for us to fill in. Uh, the catalog isn't quite as good at sorting results as those other databases. And partially that's because the number of books we have uh, even though it's it's pretty significant, it's quite fewer than the number of articles or uh, encyclopedia entries that you'll find online in those other databases. So it has a bit of a harder time sifting through. So you're going to have to do a little bit more work to go through the results in this than you would, say, on an online database. Now, uh, by default, it'll search for words and phrase here, but you could change that to author, title, subject, series, or periodical title, depending on the specificity of what you're looking for. Words of free phrase is essentially like a keyword search. So if you have a general subject term you want to type in, uh, that might lead you to what you're looking for. It's also sometimes helpful to search title instead because chances are if you know a specific word or say the name of a person you're looking for a biography of, um, that name or that subject term is probably going to be in the title of the book. Um, or at least that'll get you the most specific results if you look for title. For now, I'll do words and phrase. Since we were looking at deforestation before in uh, Credo Reference, I'll continue with that. You can see I tested it out a little bit beforehand. So deforestation right there, and I'll click search, and you'll see what it pulls up. So words of phrase deforestation search found 10 titles in our library catalog. And you see from the top, I'm not seeing deforestation show up right away as a term in any of these titles. So this says uncharted waters, the new economics of water scarcity and variability. That could be interesting to us, but um, it doesn't necessarily say deforestation. And the same is true for the rest of these, biodiversity, social justice. Ah, oh, here, here's one, tropical deforestation, small farmers and land clearing. So you see what I mean about how the, the uh, results can be sorted. You would think that because we searched the, the word deforestation that that would necessarily show up at the top, but it doesn't always in this catalog. And, and to get the results to sort well, you kind of have to do a little bit more work. But that's okay because we only have 10 titles to look through here. So it's pretty easy to look at all of these individually and see which ones might be relevant to us and which ones might not. Now, it, there was a note that the library catalog online search lets you also find some eBooks. And while it doesn't contain all of the eBooks that the library has access to, you will come across some. Uh, so here's one. Uncharted Waters, Enhanced Credo Edition. Credo is that reference database we were looking at, so it's probably on there. This one, Global uh, Social Issues, another Enhanced Credo Edition. This one specifically says, with Broadax and Firebrand, uh, in parentheses, Electronic Resource. Um, and when you see something that says Electronic Resource, you'll also see this URL button here. And you can click right on that. And it should take you right to the ebook online. Now again, because these are paid subscription database ebooks, uh, you will either have to log in with your Rosemont email address and password or um, be on campus to access them. And of course, this is gonna take a couple minutes to load. Whoops, that doesn't seem right. Well, 
Well, there must be a problem with the internet right now because I was just looking at that one before. Oh, here we go. With Broad Axe and Firebrand. So this is the ebook, and I'll show you this database uh, in a little bit, the ACLS Humanities ebook database um, for searching for more ebooks. But uh, here is that ebook, and it brings you right to it. You could download chapters, read online, etc. But I really want to focus on in, in this results listing um, the information that's listed here. So you see the title, you see the author, and then beneath that is the call number. So this is a Library of Congress call number that every book has a unique call number and it tells you exactly where it's located on the shelf in our library. And um, you know, these codes can seem long and confusing, and in some cases they get really long and really confusing. But you don't really have to know what they mean. What I want you to start paying attention to though is patterns that you see in the results. So we see this first one has TD, the second one H, we see QB, S, SD, another SD, and this SD one is the one that's actually tropical deforestation. So when we see patterns like this emerge, it might become clear to us, okay, that SD, if that's where this one that we know is, is relevant is located, then maybe the other ones that also have um, similar uh, alphabetic codes at the beginning, S and SD, are related, and they'll be located near each other on the shelves in the library, and uh, you can kind of get a sense that these books are in the similar subject area, even if you can't necessarily tell that from the titles. You'll see these other ones, HD, HC, these are probably related, uh, another H. So they can sometimes be grouped into different subject areas uh, depending on the alphabetic code at the beginning. Uh, and again, you don't have to know what that means, but but you want to pay attention to those patterns because you can kind of group your results in that way. You know, look at all the ones that are in the H's, look at all the ones that are in the SD's, see which is more relevant to the research you're doing. Since we like this tropical deforestation one, I'll click on that and it gives you a little bit more information about the book. So it tells you the publisher, when it was published, the ISBN number, this is helpful if you're trying to track it down elsewhere online or if you want to, you know, say buy a copy of the book, this is the unique code for the book. You can also click on catalog record and it gives you some subject terms that are tagged on this book. Uh, sometimes there'll be a description of the book here or a table of contents, but what's nice is that this gives you a little bit better sense of what the book is about. So it might be about specifically Ecuador and the Amazon River region or uh, peasants in, in Ecuador and the Amazon River region. Uh, so you could, you could click on any of these subjects to see what other books are tagged with that. Just like in Credo, you'll also see that there are some suggested subject terms on the side of the page, uh, agriculture, astronomy, economic history, forestry. We could click on any of these to limit our results. So we had 10 titles before, words of phrase for deforestation found 10 titles. Only three of those were in the subcategory forestry, again, that we clicked over here. So this is another way of getting those more specific results pulled up. And again, it pulled out those SD ones which tells us that that's probably the area we want to look in. Now, even though the catalog search found 10 titles for deforestation, when you get to the stacks to actually find these books, and again, there are signs in the library that tell you where the books are located based on this call number, uh, and we can help you find them too if you're a little confused about navigating the stacks. Um, but when you get to where these books are located, it's nice to look around on the shelves and see if there's anything you missed because uh, sometimes things don't come up in the catalog even though they're relevant. So when you get to the shelf where these SD books are, you might want to look at the books to the left and to the right of these and see, because they're in the same subject area, they're probably related. And there's another way of doing that if you're on the page for the individual item. You can click this tool, Nearby Items on Shelf, and it'll actually give you a list of books in call number order. So this is basically a virtual representation of how the books look on the shelf. So you'll see this one is next to this one, is next to this one. Uh, and this is an easy way to basically browse the stacks without having to be here in person. Again, I understand that given the situation that we're in right now with the pandemic, we're limiting numbers in the library. You might not want to spend much time in the library or in public, which I understand. So this can be a helpful way of browsing the stacks without actually having to come to the library. Uh, so I would encourage you to take advantage of this as much as possible if you want to look around and see what's related. 
Actually, I don't think some of these came up in our search, the forest killers, bureaucracy in the forests. These are things that seem like they'd be really relevant, and it's a good thing we checked here to find those. So this is basically how the library catalog works. Again, the most important thing you want to pay attention to is this call number, because that's going to tell you where the book is located in the library on the shelves. Um, and you know, it'll also tell you whether or not the book has been checked out. So if uh, it would say the book has been checked out here if it's not available. So this is always a good thing to check. So that's the essentials of the library catalog. But like I said, we have other eBooks that are available online. And those, again, are located uh, through the library website on our online resources page. So those would be in the electronic databases. Again, these are the things that we subscribe to and pay for. And then if we go down to multi-subject, this is uh, where we'll spend some time in our last video looking at periodical databases, things like JSTOR. Um, but for now, you'll see two things are listed here, the eBook Academic Collection and the Humanities eBook Project. Humanities eBook Project is the one that came up before when we found that title in the catalog. And let me pull that page up again. Now, what you'll notice about this, okay, so as the title suggests, it's called the Humanities eBook Collection. So the books in this eBook collection are going to be related to the humanities. So say we're looking for something on um, forestry, deforestation, environmental science. We might not find a lot in this eBook collection, um, but nevertheless, it's never a bad idea to check. So you could type in search terms here. Because this eBook collection is a little smaller, it's 5,517 books total. Uh, you might find it helpful also to browse by subject. So we could pull down this subject tab here, click more to see more subjects. It'll pull up the full list. You can see all these different subject areas and the number of books associated with each subject. So if you're looking at animal studies, there are three books. Let's click over. Now this might be interesting. Environmental history, 32 books. This could be related to deforestation. So we'll click that one. And this will show us all the books that have been tagged environmental history in this uh, collection. And you can see some of these are potentially useful in what we're researching. So health ecology, bioanthropology in central Brazil, maybe if we're looking at rainforest deforestation, this is really helpful. So we could browse through things a little bit this way. When you do pull up an individual title, it'll look like, again, that one we found before. But you can click read the book to access it, or you can download individual chapters, say if you only want to look at one chapter, you know, on a specific uh, area, you know, you just want the history, well, just look at this chapter and download that, or you just want to look at the introduction. So there are all these different ways to navigate these books. What you want to pay attention to with these ebooks as well is how to get back to the exact page to link to it. And here you see a citable link. So this you can use in your citations, or if you need to get back to this page, this is the link to use rather than the link up here. It's not always stable. Use this one. And you'll see this is the case also when we get into looking at articles online. So that's the humanities ebook collection. The other big one is the ebook academic collection. And this is through the database vendor EBSCOhost. And that gets a little confusing because EBSCOhost is not a database itself. It provides access to these different databases. And we'll look at this again in our final video when we're in OmniFile for looking at articles. So EBSCOhost here, eBook Academic Collection. And um, we won't get into this too much in this video, but for now, you could just easily type in a search term. So deforestation. And here it's suggesting some search terms for us as well. So we'll search that. And it should relatively simply pull up uh, good results for that ebook. So here, number one, deforestation, conservation policies, economic implications, et cetera, et cetera. Lots of books about deforestation here. So even though it didn't seem like we were finding a lot of books in the library catalog on deforestation, and so depending on your research, one or two books can be enough, but always remember to check these ebook collections because they do contain a lot more and they can really sort of supplement whatever you're finding in print in the library. So don't forget to look in here. There are all these tools on the left that you can use to refine your results, like publication date. That can be really helpful if you're looking at something scientific and want the most current information. You can slide this up. But again, we'll take a look at more of these tools in our articles database searching video. So that's the ebook collection. Now, I did mention that there were some free ebooks available online. 
You can get to those from the research websites link on the left of the library website. So we click that, and then we see there's a, another link here for open access books. So that'll bring us down to this part of the page for open access books. You're welcome to browse through these and check out different ones. I prefer Project Gutenberg, although it is limited in terms of what kinds of books you're going to get there. What's nice about Project Gutenberg is it's really one of the biggest collections of free ebooks online. And it also gives you access especially to um, literature, uh, literature that's in the public domain. So these will be books that have been published, generally speaking, before 1924 when copyright laws were enacted in America. So you can find, especially if you're researching works of literature or works of his, uh, historical works of science, say things written during the Enlightenment, uh, you can find a lot of those here. So even if an uh, uh, author like Jane Austen you might be reading some of her works for this class or other classes. And you can see that it pretty much gives you access to all of her novels. So we could look for Persuasion and it pulls up um, an HTML version, which would be like a website, an EPUB or a Kindle version of the ebook, uh, and more files it provides access to. And you can download these in different ways, right to Dropbox or Google Drive. Uh, and so let me just pull this up so you see. So if you look at the web version, it's a very basic website. But still, this is a great way to get access, especially to um, older works of literature for free online. Uh, and you can find many, many things in Project Gutenberg. So that's basically it for searching for ebooks and uh, books in the library catalog. Again, you want to start with the library catalog link here or the tab on the homepage, and then expand your search to those electronic databases and research websites that give you access to ebooks. Thanks.